All right, guys, after you get the board out, to remove the encoder itself, I've already actually desoldered this one. You can either use some solder braid and a soldering iron, or you can use a specialized solder sucker with a rectangle tip on it, like this one. Let me see if I can't focus on that for you. The rectangle will go around the, the rectangle pins and then over the rectangle eyelets. Once you get the, uh, the part separated, then you can proceed with repair. To open up the encoder, the first thing you need to do is remove around the edge uh, vertically the four posts that hold it on so that you still have a little bit of a nipple left over. I don't know if I can really show it here, but there's, there's, this area is actually raised. Uh, what I did is I took the blade, basically I just took the blade and I cut. <laughs> Cut here, here, and I turned the blade sideways, cut there and there, and then 45s. And so you cut everything off around it that's actually holding it on. And once you get all four done, then you can gently push the blade in and then pull the top off. All right, I went ahead and turned the light on this thing. Uh, you can push it in here gently and then walk it over here, but be careful not to knock these little. Uh, these little nipples off you cut those off then you'll have to figure out another way to hold this together and you can walk it all the way around walk it I need two hands to do it and I, I didn't bring my tripod today so but anyways that's how you do it and I'll show you when I get it open all right here we go I have the encoder open now and you can see it gets a little dirty in there just over time Here's the other part. And those little fingers are what get worn out. Let me back it off a little bit. Those little fingers get worn out and they don't want to contact this area down here anymore. And that's the problem. That little clip actually sits on the left side there. It sits right here on the left. And the little bump on it sits on those little teeth on there and that's what you get your little feel for when it's turning and it also locks it so it doesn't actually turn unless you touch it i used a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a uh, and an acid brush right here and it cleaned up really good uh, this is really heavily worn in here uh, it still works all the contacts and everything are still contacted so that's that's good so let's get over to this side here where the actual wipers are and I think my issue is going to be right here with the wipers they are really heavily worn to the point that uh, they're bent over so I still may be able to salvage them but for a long term solution I would uh, just go ahead and replace this replace the encoder uh, there is a link in the description on how to replace this encoder. It's not a direct replacement, but it is a replacement that you can wire in. Here's the replacement one. It's a little smaller, actually. And you have to, instead of pushing these through the holes, since they don't encode the same way, uh, you basically lift them up and you run wires instead. And the mod shows you how to do that. But if you're looking for a quick fix until you can get one and do all the uh, uh, all the equipment to do it, uh, this this could be a quick fix for you, a temporary one because you know these things are old. <laughs> they are they are wearing out. See how the metal is just bent over there on that one on the next to the center hub there. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of toast, and I think there's a couple over here two that may be that way and see if I can't focus them any better. Might take this over to the microscope and put it under there and try to try to let you view it that way to get a better view of it. So let's go do that. Alright here we go. We got the uh, encoder under the microscope and uh, you can see that the uh, <laughs> the little fingers right here are all messed up from just worn and being used and 
all that dirt and dust and metal flakes in, in the encoder was actually uh, the metal that had worn off of these fingers. So, and don't worry about them really being loose. That's not what's important. There's the little encoder portion itself. You can see how it's worn, but it's still usable. Did you see that's a little worn there, Mike? <laughs> Look at the grooves in that thing. So it's, it's, like switch? it's an encoder. Oh. Rotary encoder. And check out the wipers. <laughs> These are really worn off. All bent over and everything. You could bend that right back into shape. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Get me a pair of long needle nose and reshape them. You got a pair of needle nose? Look at that one. That one is just toast. I don't like that one sticking out there like that. All the ickies, huh?
too short. This one looks like it's too long. Alright, let's put it together and try it. Alright, to put this in, I just grabbed my needle nose and just kind of slid it in place right here like this. Actually get the encoder portion and set it in there. Like that. Get this. Push it back. There we go. Ah, don't you fall out now. Doggone it. There we go. Get back in there. There we go. Now it's under tension. And we can put the bottom on. Well, here we are. We're back at it again. As a temporary measure, I've gone ahead and just put tape on it uh, to make sure that it stays together while I put it in the board and solder it all back together. Uh, getting the clip and everything in the detent NISC was not fun, but I was able to get it done. All right, I've temporarily mounted it. Uh, I went ahead and soldered it back in. If it all works out, I can just tape the tape off and hit those little nubs with a soldering iron. So we're going to go over there and test it out. But when you test it out, don't put the knob on there because there's just tape holding on there. Just turn it by your hand. There we go. We've got it installed. Uh, we got the temporary tape still on it right here. And uh, simple things, my buddy here. I'll leave a link to his little uh, channel. Uh, we're going to do a little op check on it, so I'm going to raise this up a little bit here. We're going to hit shift and then test to go to the keyboard test. Right there is the uh, data wheel value. You can see when you rotate it, it's incrementing. So it used to increment once, uh, like every five rotations. Now it's, it's, it's almost working perfectly. I mean, if you were in a pinch, this would really get you through thing didn't work. I would say almost every click. Then you'll get an occasional one where it takes two. I mean, I, I, I couldn't get the data wheel test to go past just uh, single digits before he went in and fixed this. OK, 
there? What's the other things right there that you can do with this little test program? And who makes the program? Well, it's, it, it's not really a, a separate program. It's just part of the JJ operating system. Um, if you need to do diagnostics on one of these, like if you get a broken one like I did, um, this really helps out a lot. See, uh, when I press these buttons down, all the tack switches, you could see the buttons turning off and on. And then with the Q links, you could see the data value here increasing and decreasing. It tells you if those work. See, my uh, lower Q link isn't quite functioning properly. It's yeah. not a big deal right now, but you can see how it's just got a random number. Let's zoom in for these guys that have phones and stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just kind of random all over the place. Yeah, yeah right. but the, the Q1 here goes from 1,000 to zero. So you think you could probably do a detox it or whatever on that bottom one over there? It might need to be cleaned, but it might also have a broken solder lead on the wire that goes to it. Haven't oh, looked at okay. it yet. All right, well, cool. So you got this off of uh, eBay, you said? No, I got it from a local musician. He, he oh, okay. Beat it up doing a bunch of live gigs for years. <laughs> it was a backup unit. Can you say the musician's name? Uh, Os Oscilloscope Lab Laboratories out of New Orleans. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I'm cool. sorry. It was Oscilloscope Communications out of New Orleans. Oh, cool. But yeah, yeah, I think this is going to work out good for you, Sean. Um, I don't know if we're going to change that, or do you want to stick with that until it breaks, or what? Or do you want to just go with the, the mod? Um, I'd say I could stick with this one, uh, run it over the weekend, and then see how it works okay well cool so if you guys are in a pinch uh this is how you could temporarily fix it now obviously you're gonna need some specialized equipment or some real steady hands and stuff but uh it's nice to see that the little thing works and that it's usable and in a pinch you can get by with it so thanks for watching guys uh for uh, simple things and keith nunya god bless y'all and we're out bye